Hi there, sports fans, and welcome to the third edition of the Maui News Sports Report. I'm Rob Coleus, along with my human partner, Bill Schindler. Today, we're joined by bobblehead spaceman Bill Lee, bobblehead duck, action figure Drew Bledsoe, Mr. Potato Head Met, and bobblehead Mr. Met. We're here for you, so let us know at the end what you like. If you want to send along a bobblehead to join us, please do. And, Robbie, last night we saw probably what was the best game of the MIL to this point. We, it's the Baldwin Bears and the Kamehameha Warriors. The Warriors coming off of a loss against uh, Lahaina Luna. And, well, they turned around looked a lot better, 42-35 last night. And that was a ball game that Baldwin got out to a lead, but all of a sudden Kamehameha made it very close at the end. Billy. This was as wild a game as I can remember in a long time in the MIL. Uh, back and forth, as you said, close at halftime, 13 to 7 at halftime. Baldwin builds a 42 to 14 lead with a touchdown in the first minute of the fourth quarter. Uh, Kamehameha storms all the way back, 42 35, have the ball after stopping Baldwin on downs. Uh, with two minutes to play, obviously they didn't get it done, 42 35. Baldwin hangs on. They have not lost the Bears. Have not lost an MIL game to anyone but Lahaina Luna since September of 2009. Wow. And last night it almost happened, and some of the numbers were crazy. Well, I know Dusty Flores had over 200 yards, rushing three touchdowns. The Baldwin Bears, uh, you talked to me about the number of first downs for these teams alone. 50. 5-0, That as in the state of Hawaii. 28 for Baldwin, 22 for Kamehameha, 927 yards of total offense, Bill. And remember, that's in a 48-minute high school game. Baldwin, 519 yards, and uh, Kamehameha, 408. Dusty Flores, as you said, 25 carries for 213 yards, three TDs. But some of the uh, individual numbers in this game pop out. Uh, Jeremiah Badillo started at quarterback, passed for 124 yards, ran six times, for 69 yards and two touchdowns. Um, Baldwin's quarterback, Jeremiah McGlenty Tonu, came in to replace him, and he did a good job. Six more for of a seven. Passer. Yeah, much more of a uh, stationary guy. Six for seven, passing for 66 yards and a touchdown. Um, the numbers for Kamehameha individuals were pretty wild as well. Chase Newton was unbelievable. Passed for 258 yards, four touchdowns, ran 14 times for 81 yards and a touchdown. And um, Keone Keanini, four catches, two of them highlight reel catches for touchdowns for 123 yards. Joshua Hiwatashi, also two touchdown grabs, five catches for 93 yards. Kamehameha hasn't had that type of offensive output in a long, long time. And for them to fight back that way was very impressive, and I think that's going to help this team uh, grow. And again, kudos to the offensive line of Kamehameha. Did a great job last night. Moving on, let's look at the Lunas, 49 nothing. Robbie, they have blinked an opponent nine times in their last 14 games. They look good. They just keep rolling. You saw that game. And, you know, the other times they've given up points, it's been very few. Eight in their last eight MIL games, or excuse me, in their last 11 MIL games, eight shutouts. Uh, even a little more impressive. Christian Whitehead carried the ball three times, 40 yards, two TDs. Makoa Felikitanga carried the ball three times for 83 yards, including a 62-yard TD. 13 different Lunas carried the ball. They ran for 301 yards. They had one complaint. It was the passing game where they were just two for nine. Let's get to some standings and the previews for you right now. It's Baldwin leading the way in D2. They're 2 and 0. Oh, they should say D1. I apologize. D1, they're 2 and 0. Oh. Maui High at 1 and 1. D2, it looks like Lahaina Luna in first place at 2 and 0. Oh. And then, of course, 1 and 2 for the Kamehameha schools here on Maui. And King K. Kalike, like we said, struggled 0 oh 3 so far. And looking ahead, well, the big show is coming up on Friday. Robbie, we just got through talking about Baldwin and how it was a close ball game. We talked about the blowout for the Lunas. What do you expect in this one? Uh, wow. I, I mean, really looking forward to it. Friday the 13th, it's going to be a big <laughs> showdown. Uh, which Bears team is going to show up? The one that looked pretty good in a 49-20 loss to nationally ranked Mission Viejo last week or the one who... 
bolted out to a 42-14 lead last uh, Saturday night or the one that gave up three late touchdowns to make it a game against a very young Kamehameha team? I, I, I can't answer that. The Lunas will bring it on defense. Their passing game needs to get better. Baldwin will bring it on offense. This, this could be a real, real uh, uh, great game because Baldwin, I think, at least at times, has shown that they're maybe a little better than people expected. Yeah, I like the defense of the Lunas, so we'll just have to see about that. And, of course, on Saturday, Maui High, Kamehameha, so that'll be another matchup up country. We should also mention UH. They go up to Oregon, your home state. Not your school, though, the no. Oregon State University. My kids were there, though. The, the, did they go? Yeah, both Alex and Monica Colius were in the were in the stands. I got to say though, Mono Rosa, who I did a feature on this week, a young man who's a fifth year senior for Oregon State, has overcome a lot of things: injury and arrest. Now he's a starter, yeah. and he's two hundred and eighty five pounds. By the way, defensive left tackle. And let him on tackles, right? Yeah, for a, and for a defensive tackle. Wow. To finish with a game high seven tackles, that's a lot, and uh, he's looking good. Um, and UH uh, is not. Yeah, I was going to say that's more than we can say about the UH offense, especially. Two touchdowns in two weeks by the offense. That's not enough. One of them was with, in garbage time against USC, who got beat by Washington State, so maybe they're not that good. Uh, UH is really in trouble, and from what I've been hearing from friends, family, this and that, the, the offense is just not what people want or expect, and they've got a lot of work to do. The defense is not bad. Bye week this week, and then they go to Nevada. And, Bill, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention a milestone for Dave Shoji, uh, 1,107, well, now 1,108 career volleyball wins. Yeah, congrats to him. That's simply amazing Anytime you can get to that sort of mark in coaching. Uh, the unofficial governor of the state. The guy's been the only coach in Wahine history, uh, and two, two Maui County girls doing very well. Kalea Adolfo, seven blocks, seven kills, five blocks as UH sweeps UCLA. And Andy Banikowski was in the house to uh, talk to Coach Shoji. Ginger Long, the Kamehameha, former All-America in high school, one kill. She's been getting some playing time this year. And in other MIL volleyball, the, the D2 race is going to be something between three teams. Molokai, 4-0. Seabury Hall and Hana are each 2-0. Those two teams have gone back and forth in Molokai winning a state title, Seabury winning the last two MIL titles in the last three years, and Hana, Hana, 86 students going to uh, the state tournament last year in girls volleyball. Kamehameha Maui, complete control of the Division I race. Uh, and this week in MIL cross country, Corbin Kaikonen of Lahaina Luna wins for the second time in three races. Kiana Smith with Dakota Grossman on the Big Island, mm -hmm. uh, Kiana Smith steps up and wins the girls' title for Seabury Hall. Great. Well, anyway, a pleasure joining you and a pleasure joining you, Rob, and uh, we'll see you next week. And anybody, if you have any ideas, you want to send us a bobblehead, any ideas, email me, rcolias at mauinews.com. That's R-C-O-L-L-I-A-S at mauinews.com. Call me on my desk line at 242-6337. And uh, we'll see you on the Internet.